Today we're working on a 1995 Porsche 993. I'm going to be doing coilovers on this car. We'll have to take the wheels off and uh, the suspension off this car. This one has a six speed manual transmission. Um, it's pretty nice condition. It's really nice tan leather interior. Uh, so we'll go ahead, pop the rear trunk, gain access to the motor. This one has the 3.6 liter M64 air cold motor. It's a six cylinder. So we'll have to gain access to the strut top mounts in the front of the car. So this is a elephant racing kit. Uh, it was actually pieced together by another company. So they use some of uh, elephant racing parts along with their own. Um, I did end up having to remove these helper springs as this kit I wasn't able to get the ride height set. You'll see later on this video. H&R uh, shocks, Swift springs, and Bill Stein helper springs. And you'll see the bottom here is the sway bar end link mount threaded onto the body of the shock with front um, camber plates. So I'll have to open up this carpet, get access to the um, front camber um, strut tops, to remove the upper ones. And for the rear of the uh, car, the strut tops are mount mounted back behind the motor. It's kind of hard to see. There we go, we got the flashlight. So there's four 13 millimeter nuts on each side and we'll go ahead and start taking off the wheels. So just lift up the carpet in the front to be able to gain access to these four nuts. Just pop them loose for now. So this is an 18 and a 10 millimeter bolt. I removed the plastic cap for the wiring. Also take the brake clip off. Um, there's a couple wires hanging around here. I'm just gonna remove everything out of the way to allow the strut to be removed from the car. Pop this clip off, there we go. Take this one off here. Focus. Take like a uh, pry bar or a bigger flat headed screwdriver and pop the clip off for the brake line. This is what the clip looks like holding the brake line to the strut body. So you're going to need to take the brake line off. You need a 17 millimeter wrench on the back side and an 11 for the brake line. Once you take off the top bolt and the lower bolt, putting the steering knuckle to the strut, you have this piece here that has both the nuts contained inside of it and then you'll be able to pull these off just like that. Take that one out and this is what it looks like once they're all removed from the steering knuckle. Go ahead and take a pry bar and just kind of work itself out. Just be careful with this brown wire wrapped around the plastic uh, body. Just give it some way and then just let the rest of the uh, pieces just kind of hang down like that. So now with the bottom part of the strut disconnected, I'm going to go ahead and take off these four 13 millimeter nuts on the top and then lower the strut assembly out from the bottom. Here I'm just taking the 13 millimeter nuts off the top of the um, 
strut top on the inside of the car and just holding it with my other hand so it doesn't come crashing down. My bad, got most of my leg in this shot. But yeah, just take those nuts off. Um, I like to get them started uh, with a ratchet and then take them off by my hand the rest of the way. So here's the used one and the new one. They're both the same uh, strut body, the shock body, H&Rs. The only difference is the new ones have a swift spring and a, I believe this is a Bilstein helper spring. And then this one's gonna have a solid um, camera plate mount. So I'll go ahead and attach that onto here. All right, so this is the strut assembly. It comes packed with these spacers, washer, and a nut. And we're gonna replace it with the adjustable camera plate. And the supplied nut. Make sure you use this one because it's a deep. All right, it's finger tight. These are loose. I'm going to take these off and then torque everything once it's installed in the car. All right, so the bolts are tightened. So the bigger one goes on the bottom and then the smaller one goes on the top with the um, oval cutout. And I just try to match it up. You'll see the wear marks on the knuckle. Just try to match it up as close as possible. And then the top, um, I'll get that more dialed in. Right now it's a little bit loose. Once the other side is done and um, and then get the other side done, put the car on the ground and kind of get it um, as close to possible before it goes out to alignment. So I'm just gonna put all the wires and put the brake line back together. Um, I'm gonna have to bleed the brakes once the car's done. But I'm just gonna put the side together and then do the same exact thing I showed you on the other side. Make sure um, you put your struts on the right side. They are left, right specific, especially with um, the hole for the brake line. So just make sure you match, you know, the sides, otherwise they'll be backwards. All right, so once the new strut is installed, just be sure to take the old clips off. So like this one, there's a plastic center pin. You just have to pry up to take the pressure off and pull that out. And then um, same thing for this, pop this cover off. And inside the middle, there's a, um, a center pin, just like this one. So I'm gonna transfer those over and then get all these wires mounted up. The most important thing is probably the brake line. Just pay super close attention to not um, stripping out the lines, the fittings for the brake line. So it's just gonna cause you more headaches. So once it's in, um, put this clip, slide it down, make sure it locks in place. You'll see where it slides into, uh, but yeah, it's probably the most important part. Just make sure you don't ruin the brake lines. This is the center pin for that one piece. So you kind of just have to go in there and one thing and pry out and then the whole piece went. Now we go and install it. It's going to help to get this started a little bit and then get push the pin into the strut mount and then tap in the center um, tightener 
once it's in there. Same thing for this one. Um, you can see right um, here, there's this center pin. So I came from the backside and pushed it. It's kind of hard to see, but from the backside here, and then I pushed it out and then allowed it to come through. And then you can just pick it up. Same thing as the other one, just a center pin. And that's gonna let you pull this. Probably gonna take a little persuasion, pop it up with a flat blade, get that one ready. And then the next one is this. And we're gonna do the same method, come from behind. If you, even if I have to use a 90 or 45 degree pick to push it from the backside, pop it out, pull this in, and transfer all this stuff over to the new one. And the new ones do have all these provisions for it. So makes it super helpful and nice, simple install. All right, you're probably wondering how the heck do I get that thing out? Get yourself one of these. Come in from the back here, find the center and just push it out. Just make sure you're right in the center push that all the way and just grab it but yeah these something like this is a snap one but you can get these at Harbor Freight anywhere really just a good leveraged uh, bigger strong uh, sturdier pick but yeah this is gonna be your friend all right so this is the driver's side just gonna go ahead and do the same thing take this clip off swing it out from the, um, the plastic shield there's this uh, brown wire that's on the back side of it. So just try to swing it around the back end, you'll see what I mean. Um, disconnect the clip for the brake line and we're gonna have to detach the brake lines again. Um, these plastic connectors right here. And um, yeah, just take off the two bolts. This is a, I believe it's an eight or 10 mil Allen. And then the bottom one's a 18 millimeter socket. I'll uh, show more detail of that and then once I finish up this side, I'm going to torque both sides at the same time. The front's all back together. I'm just going to go over all the torque specs. These are all 24 foot-pounds of torque. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is 59 foot-pounds of torque. This bolt right here, the top one, is 88 foot-pounds. Bottom one right here is 147 foot-pounds. All right, so the front suspension is all torqued down. Here's the driver front strut top. Over here is the passenger side, all set up. The only thing I have left to do is set the ride height, but I'll do that once the rear is done and I go for a couple test drives. All right, so I'm doing about to start on the rear the suspension. So I'm gonna have to get back in there. Um, it's kind of hard to see this area there's four uh, 13 millimeter nuts. So here's the front side. This is the front of the car. So there's a 18 millimeter nut and then a T40 on the inside to counter hold the stud. And I'm gonna have to take the arm, um, the sway bar link off. So here's the sway bar links. I'm gonna take both of those off as well, both nuts and probably have to counter hold the stud. Uh, take those off on both sides. So you have to take this rear arm off and in order to get the driver's side bolt out You're gonna have to put a jack under the motor and lift the motor up and that gives you enough clearance to um, Slide the bolt out, but in order to take the bolts out you have to take the sway bar off so take the sway bar links off the suspension and then remove um, the sway bar brackets and in order to do that and gain access to the 18 millimeter nut on the back side of this bolt, uh, just take off your cover and also the rear engine cover. And then you'll be able to take the, remove the sway bar completely. And the passenger side, um, you don't have to worry about clearance issues. The bolt will just slide right out. And then obviously take the nut off on the uh, strut. And then, um, be just the driver's side, you're gonna have to lift the motor up to clear the um, exhaust exchanger right here. 
I just broke this down, put that in there a little bit. There we go. So make sure that boot goes all the way down the body. Go ahead and put our Swift Springs. And these are flat on the top and bottom. The top plate. And this is the mounting plate. Secure the nut. And then I'm just gonna verify with the untouched one as far as the spring installed spring length just so I make sure I have the correct preload on this and then adjust it from there for uh, desired ride height. All right, so the next day, everything's going back together. Uh, the only difference is the length from the mounting position to the, of the bottom of the strut to the rear toe link and the sway bar. This one is closer. Uh, if I go higher, I'm gonna run into ride height issues with the adjustment on here. Um, I didn't have to take any uh, the sensors, wires off, or the upper link. Um, just this one. And remember to raise the motor so you can get this pulled in. The other side's pretty easy because you don't have to worry about raising or lifting anything. And then um, I made a mark so I knew where to put the eccentric uh, bolt. Uh, this car's still gonna get an alignment but just helps to get it close to where it used to be. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the sway bar on, the sway bar bushings and the mounts and the end links, and then um, torque everything up afterwards, and I just put the body, the under panels back on. All right, what's up? The 993 is all done. I did run into an issue. Um, so this suspension was pieced together by another shop. Um, and the helper spring was causing ride height issues. Um, so I ended up taking the helper spring off. It just wasn't necessary because the way it was installed, it was completely crushed. So basically there was just no need for uh, the helper spring in the rear suspension of this car. Um, drove it a little bit, set the suspension, drove it again, just made sure everything was good. Uh, it's gonna go out to alignment. Um, I don't have the special tools for 993, but I think it came out pretty nice. It's pretty simple, it's just, uh, I was uninformed of the suspension kit that, you know, that I was actually installing. So here's the car, um, final ride height. It's gonna settle down. Uh, just give it a, you know, probably after a couple hundred miles, the suspension will squat a little bit more. I think it looks pretty decent. It's about three finger gap, two and a half finger gap in the rear. The front's probably like two finger. You yeah, more, more, a little bit, a little bit of light through the two fingers. Um, but yeah, like I said, the rear's gonna squat down a little bit more after driving a couple more hundred miles. It looks pretty good. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got all the information you needed. Um, if I missed anything, just comment down below. Um, I'm pretty, I don't think I missed anything really. I try to update you guys as much as possible when I was doing the installation. So yeah, everything should be in this video. It's a pretty simple install. So um, yeah, good luck and let me know how it turns out. Peace.